now, political analyst Dick Morris, author of the book Power Grab, Obama's Dangerous Plan for a One-Party Nation. Dick, it's good to have you back here at the Anchor Desk on America's Forum. Good, good to be here. You warned us yeah, in Power Grab. I told you so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what should we expect next from this president? Uh, a, a, a panoply of regulations such as you uh, can't even imagine. And uh, I go through them all in my book, Power Grab. I think he'll attempt to send the internet to an international authority, perhaps the United Nations, so that our enemies can control it, Russia and China. I think that he's going to make unionization virtually uh, universal in the private sector by basically stacking it so that the unions can win any union election they choose to bring by changing the rules of the game. I think the EPA is going to regulate streams on private property. It's going to regulate every, every institution, every hospital, every school in the United States in terms of its emissions. I think that if you think you're going to have money for education, forget about it. You're going to have to convert your heating system instead. Uh, I think that his whole approach in foreign policy will be to tilt directly in favor of our former adversaries or still our adversaries, he just won't recognize it. I think that on health care reform, he's going to expand, going to change it as much as he has to to try to conform to the court decisions. And he's going to try, I think, to continue it even though uh, the courts may be against him. And on immigration, he's just going to complete the process he began. This isn't his last amnesty. Well, mindful of that fact, and since that's a subject that I have more than a, a little bit of concern about, where where is the where is the check and balance? Is, is Congress did did Speaker Boehner and uh, Republican Leader McConnell basically signal to the president, full speed ahead, go ahead? No, no, not at all. I think they said full speed ahead through the end of February, by which time we will have set up our structure and we'll be in control of both houses. Uh, at that point, I would expect them to do a very detailed challenge through the budgeting process. What they did is they told all other executive branch agencies, here's your money for the rest of the year. But with immigration, he said, uh, they said, uh-uh, you only get funded through the end of February. And at that point, there will be the fight of the century between Congress and the president over whether to fully fund immigration or cut it back in order to vitiate his executive order. This ain't our first rodeo, Dick. We know what happens with the, the <coughs> chorus of Cassandra's in the Washington press corps. This will be characterized as these people just have their rights and the mean Republican Congress is taking it away. And there will be those within the Republican conference who are open border folks who will say, we can't take it away. Yeah. Does this not set up another political trap for the Republicans? I think that we have to understand that the main change that took place in 14 was the defection of the blue-collar working-class Democrats to the Republicans. And immigration had a huge amount to do with it, not because they're Latinos, but because they're low-income people competing for low-income jobs and low-income wages. And therefore, I think that opposition to that executive order is widely popular. The perception that it was overreaching, I think, is deeply felt by the American people. And this is a confrontation I think Congress can and will win. Remember what Mark Twain said, when a cat sits down on a hot stove lid, he won't do that again, but he won't sit down on a cold one either. <laughs> Republicans have to distinguish between the hot and the cold stove lid. Well, there are those who would say the president, at least internationally, is, uh, is sitting down on a hot stove. In that same interview with NPR, he would not rule out the possibility of putting an embassy in Tehran. What does that say to the Iranian regime? Well, if he's that confident that they're not going to be transformed into hostages, why doesn't he send Michelle as the ambassador? <laughs> well, now there All is a thought. Dick, Dick, Dick Morris <laughs> making news, a groundbreaking role for the first lady, right. Michelle Obama, so as the ambassador to Iran. I mean, that would not be a plum diplomatic assignment. You're essentially signing in for a year and a half of hostage taking. Look, Iran hasn't even said that it's going to be peaceful. Iran hasn't even said that it won't take the hostages. It's one thing when a person says, I'm not your enemy and you're naive enough to believe it. 
It's another when a person says, I hate you, I'm going to kill you, I'm never going to stop, and you're too stupid to mm. listen to what he's saying. Hey, this kind of provocative comment you can <laughs> find in this new best-selling book, Power Grab. You can find out more visiting powergrab411.com to get your copy. More with Nick Morris coming up.